I'm Ted from Everything Attachments. We're here today with Peanut. We're over here at the factory. We've been trying for the last couple weeks to really get what we think is the perfect post hole digger to go behind a B and a BX. Uh, we've been selling our junior model for these uh, tractors and it does work. But now I can see where some of the people have had, you know, some slight complications, and it's it's because these these tractors are they're fairly small on a on a small category one tractor class one compact, and the subcompacts the the lift just gets so small your area that you have to work with is small, and because of the size of the tractor you need the uh, the shorter boom on it to be able to lift it up out of the ground so when the corkscrew hits it doesn't pull you in. So you're going to see this just as, um, as, as new as we are at this. We've, we've thrown away about six booms and six ends to get this right. We first started out with a land pride just to kind of do a little comparison, kind of get some geometry off of that we thought would be perfect. But um, so the first thing we did was saw the ends off of it to kind of make these exact same shapes because we really aren't, I've seen this before. I'm not sure where this is made, but I've seen some that were built before that were from China for some other major manufacturers. And what they did was simply put the end of the pipe in a press and they pressed it shut. Then they cut whatever angles they wanted onto it and then welded them back shut. And that's what's been done here. Whether it was done here or in China, I don't know, but this is not the way I want to build it for a couple of reasons. Uh, for Land Pride, and I'm surprised because their quality is generally great, um, this particular one, the, uh, the pipe that goes on the gearbox here is about a half inch or three quarters of an inch off of center. And this piece here, it lacks a lot to be desired, including fitting the tractor. So we put, first thing we did was we put the Land Pride together, we wanted to, well, that's not exactly true. First thing we did was actually make these pieces exactly the same and put it all together. And we noticed that on the B, it let it come up too high and got into the uh, rear toolbar there. And on the BX, it just about tore the whole top link hitch out of it because it was bottoming out up here. So we went back to the drawing board two or three times. We've come up with what I think is the right geometry and what's easy for everybody to hook up. And we should be able to send this to you, directly to you, delivered for about the price that the dealer's paying for it, that you're buying it from the Land Pride. So we hope it'll save you a lot of money and give you even a better piece. So we're gonna, we did find out that it is Schedule 40 pipe. And uh, so that's what we're using. But we wanted to put a plate on the back of it to bring it down so the guard has room for our steel guard. And we wanted to get it to where um, you could get it plenty high off the ground. We wanted to keep it out of the toolbar on the B and we wanted to keep it out of the top link brace on the BX, which was all uh, semi problems. When I looked at them on the internet, the, the Land Pride that was shown, it showed the draw bars out on the outer pins which if you have the, the center adjuster stabilizers, it's a real pain to have to loosen all that up, get them on the outside, retighten them back up because you do want it to stay centered. So we're trying it to get all the geometry right whether it works on the inside or the outside. It's critically to me important that it works on the inside so I don't have to loosen up my stabilizer bars for every piece of equipment. I just put them out and I don't have to mess with them. Um, so when you put them to the inside, it lifts an extra few inches. That's when it starts getting in the toolbars with the one I tried from Land Pride. So we're, we've thrown away six of these things. We've worked on it twice as long as we thought we would uh, to get everything right. This is the first hole we've dug with the one that we finally decided we liked the geometry on. And we've got over 58 inches of clearance at full height on this. And that gets everything at a really critical angle to where that's not the place uh, you want to be quite that high when you engage it. In fact, there's no good reason on a current model tractor that has uh, a standard PTO where you're not having to run it like in the old days on the 8N Ford before you put it in the ground to be safe and be accurate with your hole. If you've got an X right here, you should be able to set your bit down right on your X and then start your PTO. So there's no good reason that you're going to have your PTO on while you're out of the hole. And you will be raising it up and down some to clear the hole as you're drilling. But um, you, you might be able to use a 48 inch bit on this just because it will come higher. I wouldn't recommend it. We are going to try it just to see how it does. 
but uh, these 30 inch bits are the right uh, height for this tractor, especially on the BX. But we're gonna give it a try with Peanut and see how it does. We like keeping the steel covers. We like not just crimping the ends shut and welding them. This is the first piece we've done a, a video on without it being painted, I think, except my first root grapple. But we're, we're just trying to make sure we've got everything right before we paint it. Uh, there will, there's one piece missing from this that will be on it, and that's gonna be a stop that's welded two and a quarter inches out, and it'll go down five inches, so it'll bottom out on the bottom of that gearbox when you're in transportation, so it can't swing, mess up your drive shaft, or anything else, but there's no reason why it should be operated that high. Let's go on up all the way, Peanut. So, it clears everything except for your drive shaft is rubbing right now. And it's at too much angle to truly be run. Cut it off before I grab hold of this. Okay, so when we put our stop in there, it's gonna have about an inch clearance right here. That's the angle it's gonna be on. I'm gonna hold it here, Peanut. Now let it down until this becomes straight. Whoa, right, right about there. So at this height right here, which is still about almost two feet off the ground, you would be able to operate it with the stop in it. But there's still no good reason why you would be operating it this high. All right, go ahead and crank it up, set it down, and let's see how this works. And you should always stand way back from a post hole digger. I'm gonna try to stay in the frame just so we can do this. His vent's pretty vertical. Set it down, you can back up or down easily with a hydrostatic tractor, which I think all B and BXs are. Perfect. You probably, yeah, have to give it a little fuel. These are the same types of augers, just shorter as we've been using for years on our everything attachment sticker. It's pretty dry here, it's red clay. But it is dirt. Uh, I've had people say they could, you know, they wore out a set of tips on the first day or something, and they had to pour water in the hole. But you know, they're meant for dirt, not for rock. All right. So clear your hole, good peanut. Pull forward. And then what I usually do is bump it on and clear the dirt out, just like peanut did. It's got a nice clear hole, about 30 inches. Everything worked good. This will be designed for a, uh, you could do a four. Four's not a popular bit. Four, six, nine, or 12 with the bits we're gonna be offering. Um, we do have a gearbox that would go on here that would do bigger holes, but I'm not sure why you'd be doing them with this smaller tractor. We'll explore that as we get further. Um, I think this is gonna work. What do you think, Peanut? We'll try it on the BX next. Uh, make sure we've got our clearance right. We've redesigned this front piece about three times just to get the uh, top link to not bind up in the, in the particular way that the BX is built. And we wanna keep this boom as short as we can so you've got good leverage to, once it goes down in the ground that you can pull it back up. Um, and we wanna be able to use this geometry down here on the bottom just to make it easy for you to hook up. So if we can get this to, to you delivered for the price of about what the Kubota dealer that's selling the Land Pride parts for to them, uh, I think you'll be good to go and I think we'll all uh, have a good successful post hole uh, drilling season. Uh, we'll put it on the BX. The length of boom on there, it's keeping the bit nice and straight all the way down without having to pull forward. I like it. Man, that'd make putting the fence in easy. Perfect. I, I'm satisfied. Let's put it on the BX. All right, so now we're back with the same post hole digger that we've designed for the category class one tractor, uh, which was the small tractor. And now we've put it on the BX, which is considered to be a subcompact tractor. So we've gone through a lot of trouble to get this to work on these smaller hitches, which can kind of be aggravating if you've got one of these and you know it with the center stabilizer bars being so aggravating to hook up and just everything being so small. 
So at all the post hole diggers we've looked at, including the Lamb Pride, where it bottomed out right there with this wider piece here on it, it was really bad on the BX. So we about tore our tractor up on the first pull as we went up with the uh, Lamb Pride went on it. So we've redesigned that. We've scalloped out the piece where it's got plenty of room to lift to its full lifting height. And, and all the geometry is good. Right now it's about an inch from right here and that's where it's gonna be once we put our stop right here. So on the, on the BX it actually kind of fits a little better than it did on the B. And with the shorter boom you're gonna have the leverage to get it out of the ground on this little BX. So um, go ahead and, uh, and just keep in mind you should always have your bit down against the ground before you start it. I just measured this bit. I thought it was a 30. It's actually, overall, it's a, almost 36. It lacks just a little bit. Has about 30 inches of usable flighting on it. So you should end up with a, a 30 inch hole. Let it on down. So he's coming up just a little bit to clear the flighting. Back up just a little bit, Peanut, to clear, straighten up your hole. Perfect, that's good. So the, the, the drive shaft's running straight, everything's clearing, let's drill another one. Even though you could put a 48 inch bit, which is our standard length on here, I wouldn't recommend it because it's gonna put you down to about one foot of clearance while you're transporting or loading it back on your trailer. It looks, let's do one more just for the heck of it. As good as it's going, it's doing good. Perfect. That's good. All right, just cut it, stay right there and cut it off for a minute, Peanut. So, some of the manufacturers, and I think Land Pride did have metal shields on it. Most of them don't. The reason we use metal shields, and they do every now and then get bent just a little bit during shipment, but they bend right back. And the good thing about them, you know, these guards are real because of the bolts and so forth that can catch clothing. And not that you should be back here anyway, but post hole diggers are something that just need to be made as safe as possible for everybody the manufacturer the user everybody so these steel shields even if they're out in the sun for 10 years or 20 years whatever the paint may be gone but the shield's going to still be here it won't be cracked off like a plastic shield's going to be so we try to make everything at everything attachments last a lifetime you know to, as, as much as that can sound like and put the good stuff on it make it in america for everything we can <clears throat> the only thing that's not really here is going to be the uh, the gearbox. We make all the guards and everything. And if you'll notice, we, we put the holes, the, it should always have two bolts in the auger uh, and through the shaft on the output. That's not meant to shear down there. There is a shear bolt right here, so if it hits a rock or something, it shears up here. You'll never shear these two half-inch bolts here. And we've offset these holes where you can bring the auger to one place, put both holes in it without having to remove the shield. So we, we like that part real good. Um, so it looks like we've gotten all our geometry to work right, which is the hardest with it in the in, inside positions because it actually lifts further. And we'll show you a picture where we've scalloped this out a little bit to make this clear right here, which it didn't on the Land Pride and several others that we've heard of on the internet. Um, you know, our original design of all our other post hole diggers, this is called the hoop or the bell, and we bring ours over the top with a long ridge on it. And we tried that at first, and 
we really like that, especially on the bigger ones, because that ridge on top really makes them strong. And for a bigger tractor that might be hung on something that's trying to lift, but this tractor's not going to do that. So we've gone with the underneath mount to be able to clear the bar that's on the B. So we, we fought back and forth with the, what it took to make it work on these smaller tractors and keep everything out of the way on all the brands of tractors that we know of. There's nothing that's worse than these two to get everything to clear. And if you've, if you've dealt with these aggravating stabilizers from the inside, you know you don't have to mess with them any more than you have to. So we've got it to where you can put them on and off without having to adjust them once you've got them set. Um, this will be for sale on the website on Landshark, uh, on our Landshark attachments, which are basically, those, those attachments are two things. They're for the subcompact that we haven't really been tailoring to for box blades, scrape blades, and everything. Uh, so we're going to have the smaller specialized stuff that's meant for the smaller hitch that we haven't had fully. And then also there's some bigger things, scrape blades, box blades with hydraulics, hydraulic angling rakes, scrape blades, box blades with the ripper shanks that come up. So our Land Shark series is going to be a real hit, I think. We are going to paint it orange because unfortunately, like it or not, the majority of tractors that are being sold right now are orange. If you want it in the yellow, uh, we probably will be able to do that with no problem. Just let us know what you would like. If you have a different colored tractor, blue or whatever, you would rather it be our industrial yellow than you would the orange. That's, that's not a problem. We can handle that. So at Everything Attachments, we want you to know that we're working hard for you and us to make everything fit and, and work right and be here for a lifetime. And, and the big key thing to this is, is hook up right and work right. So we went to a lot of effort on this, more than I would have expected, and hope that the box blades and scrape blades and everything we're working on are easier. Uh, that's about what it boils down to, isn't it, Peanut? All right, talk to you on the next video when we got our next product out, which should be at the end of the week. Thank you.